Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. Thirsty Thursday. This is your bloody happy hour podcast. If you're a new listener, this is our full episode. This is the episode where we tell you a story and we have our drinks and we have fun with the story. So you will hear some little bit of comedy in with the sadness of the crime, but we don't want this to be a very sad podcast, so that's why we have to laugh with it. Right, Caroline? Right. Um, and so I'm drinking on in my beautiful Bloody Happy Hour tumbler made by Idle Hands Crafts and more, Misty McCombs. I am drinking some Tito's Vodka, my spark drink because it's 1030 in the morning brunch. Yeah. And I put my collagen in there so I can have it all in one. You are just hit. You're doing it all. It's basically breakfast and my everything it's yeah, everything yeah what do you have uh ranch water ranch water margarita style margarita yeah. okay can you who's our first episode sponsor for today um april are you looking for a great haircut or shave experience i need a shave come to champions salon and barber where the skilled barbers and stylists are dedicated to giving you the best service possible whether you need a simple haircut or a complete grooming package, they have you covered. And while you're there, you can enjoy a complimentary beer and friendly chat with their staff. How great is that? So they have two convenient locations in Waco and one in Woodway. You can book appointments online or through the app and you could make it easy to visit. So go to Champion Salon and Barber today and experience a cut above the rest. Goodbye. There you go. All right. And so the next one is Blend Jets. All right. If you love smoothies or if you love your protein in the morning, you need to get you a Blend Jets. You can do that if you go into blendjet.com. If you enter the code BHH12, you get a discount. And let me tell you, these things are portable. They are easy to use. They can fit in your cup holder. You can have it at home or you can have it in your office like I do. Right this morning, I had my blueberry banana one mm, with it? some chia seed. It wasn't chunky or anything? It was very smooth. Wow. When I have it in my shaker, it is a little chunky. Oh, so this is wow. a great alternative. I love it. Um, it is battery powered, so all you have to do is plug it in every two weeks, and the battery never runs down. Oh, my gosh. I love battery powered things. Go to Blendjets and order you a Blendjet and get a discount. Thanks, April, for sharing. You're welcome. Um, What else? What's happening? We have, you know what, what's been going on right now is we have a couple trials happening. We have. Oh, are we going to the no, next? No, 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 no. <coughs> yeah, we got the Letitia Stalk and Lori Vello. Yes. And one one thing that was um, interesting was that both of them in both of the trials that are going on at the same time have had their own children testifying against them, getting up on the stand testifying against them. Because Ooh. Letitia has a daughter uh -huh. who she like totally, I mean, she, this, she's pl pleading not guilty by reason of insanity, saying she went to barely insane at the time that she committed the crime. She is just pure evil. This is Letitia. Yes. Okay. She is pure evil. She, there's so many recorded conversations. It's wild. But the, even the way that she treated her daughter, she was like backhander. Uh, yeah. And I so hate the horrible daughter, moms. The daughter is so, I mean, she's beautiful, this girl. I don't know. She must have gotten her look to her dad because that, look. Oh, I can't even with Letitia. Anyway, she got up, testified against her, and it was this whole thing. You know, she tried to use the daughter as like, 
maybe an accomplice, but the daughter didn't know. Mm. And anytime the daughter would question her, like, why are we driving across from Texas to Florida in this v- van that you rented? Yeah. Anytime she would question her, she would just, like, yell at her and just be mean to her. And so the daughter was just so scared to say anything. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Then we have the Vallow case, Vallow Daybell. And if you did not think this was a cult, this is definitely a cult. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is. Definitely. The things that they're saying, I mean, the things that they do, and it has a lot to do with the LDS church, with okay. the Latter-day Saints. But this isn't the FLDS. It's just LDS. Mm. But there's, it's a very religious thing. They really do think a lot of these things that they're talking about. It's wild. There's not been a day without any just it's been if it was on if it was televised, it would be so much. Yeah. Yeah. Crazier. And but, you know, they're trying them separately. So hopefully when we get to chat. So basically what they're doing with Lori is they're the defense is trying to convince them that, okay. Lori was convinced or manipulated by Chad. Like this was all Chad's idea. Uh It was Chad this, Chad that. But it's both of them. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't believe it. So those are just a couple updates. It was interesting. Her son, Colby Ryan, uh, testified against her this week. And now a word from our sponsors. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You, you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it it's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. <laughs> Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Hola, yo soy Jackie. Y yo soy Jessica. Y esto es Zona del Crimen. podcast donde hablaremos sobre casos de crímenes reales y eventos impactantes que han quedado marcados a través del tiempo. Recuerden que nos pueden seguir en Facebook, Instagram o donde escuches tus podcasts favoritos. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By, By the, the Cover, Cover Podcast. podcast. We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months, and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. (laughs) For sure. For sure. (laughs) You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Where are we going? We are going to... We're going to go into a bunch of different places. Okay. We're going to go play with some Playboy bunnies. We're going to go to reality TV. Yes, yes, We're yes, going to go yes. to um, Megan Mixon. VH, VH1. We're going to go to VH1. Yay, I loved this reality TV. And I never had watched that. Ugh, of course so you did So when we get it. there, you'll have to tell me about it because I don't even know what it's about except for Megan is looking for a millionaire. Yes. And I don't know why she has three seasons. She didn't find it the first two? I thought they canceled the first season. Oh, well, I, oh, that was the first season that it was on? Okay. Yeah. So we're going, we're getting back to reality, reality TV. It's in the prime in the early 2000s. So w- this is when shows like Survivor starts, American Idol, The Bachelor, The Osbournes were going on, um, celebrity dating shows like Flavor of Love, Flavor Flav, Rock of Love, all these things. And 
We remember that, like... So, at one point, it was only real world, right? Did you ever yeah. watch the real world? Oh, okay. Yes. So, then it was... That was just it. Everybody's dream... The like, real world is OG. It was everybody's dream to be on the real world, I feel I'm like. I'm pretty sure I applied. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, And then, there was a couple, like... I think the next one I watched was, like, Flavor Flav or... Um, Megan wants to be a maid, like all these things, and then like there were like a little spinoffs, yeah, at the beginning, yeah, and there was like a little spinoff. So this was kind of like in that time, yeah. So it's like March two thousand nine, yeah. So thirty um, two year old Ryan Jenkins, he's a Canadian real estate developer, and he comes from a lot of money. He's a millionaire, mm-hmm. comes from a lot of money, and he has money. And so he meets Jasmine at this. I'll tell you who Jasmine is. Wait, what did I totally skip all that? Oh, I'm dead. Uh, he meets Jasmine Fior or Le- Lapore. Jasmine Lapore. And Jasmine was born in 1981. She grew up in California and just outside of Santa Cruz. Her parents divorced when she was eight years old. And then she ended up leaving her hometown to start a modeling career. And she booked for jobs in Las Vegas. And she modeled for restaurant ads and worked as a swimsuit model. So they're in Vegas. That's where they meet. They meet. And two days later, they get married. Mm, Red flag. Talk about a red flag. I mean, it sounds promising, right? Um, So then Ryan Jenkins... He had been a contestant on two VH1 reality shows. Megan Wants a Millionaire is one of them. Okay. And uh, the dating show. But then he was also on the show called I Love Money 3. Yes. I love money. I love money. I love money. With New York. Wait. I don't know. Keep looking it up. I love money. I watched it. Megan Wants a Millionaire is centered around... 17 wealthy single men who competed for the affection of reality TV show star Megan Hauserman. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit about her. No, not that. Yeah, Megan Hauserman. So, according to, like, ABC News, this guy who was another contestant, uh, Audi... He said that he thought Ryan was a good guy and he seemed like laid back and down to earth and just kind of vouched for him. I was just like, yeah, he was a cool guy. But Ryan had this dark, violent past. And in January of 2007, he was convicted of assaulting his then girlfriend, Fern Jewell, and was sentenced to 15 months probation, which included counseling for domestic violence. And he apparently withheld this information from his new wife, because, you know, who he married after two days. But within like a month, all of this, all of it surfaced. Um, so all these are kind of like, um, so I Love Money was kind of like, um, what's the one that I don't watch now? Oh, Bachelor, maybe. Uh-huh. So they're all competing for the love of... This rich guy. Yeah. So Megan Hauserman, she was a former Playboy model, and Uh she was on season three of the reality show called Beauty and the Geek. I don't remember her. on. I didn't watch that one. I watched I Love Money and and, um, Flavor of Of Love. Love. So from whenever – so she – this Megan won – Charm School. I watched her on Charm School. And from there, she was cast on the second season of Rock of Love with Brett Michaels and kind of became like this reality. She was the blondie. She was the blonde girl. If you watch any of them, the blonde girl, the ditzy one. Um, people really kind of hated her, but she looked she looked good. Like her body was great. She was a playboy girl, but people just didn't really like her. But she needed charm school because they would show her like farting on air. She liked this horrible like mouth. So all the girls, they took all the reality girls Mm -hmm. that had like horrible manners that needed like debutante like skills. They needed charm school and they took them to charm school and it was like, it was a mess because 
bitches were fighting. They were pulling. It was ratchet. It was of like course. taking all the ratchet ones and trying to make them. Uh, and it wasn't, 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 wasn't. But, yeah, okay, I'm looking at Ryan Jenkins, and I remember him now, too. Yeah. So this a lady named Gwendolyn, she had two sons that were in school in California with Jasmine. So this lady was kind of like a mother figure to Jasmine. And she said, quote, he had physically abused Jasmine. I mean, here's someone who you love, who you put your trust into, and that man beat you and calls you names. Women are ashamed of it, but it happens to women all the time, and it's awful. So I guess that she's, Mm -hmm. yeah, Mm -hmm. being abused. So Jasmine, um, at first, she just kind of like, didn't say anything about this abuse, right? And then she's still kind of talking to like her former boyfriend, this guy Travis. Um, and they started to get a little bit closer. He kind of knew what was going on. And then at a Las Vegas hotel, Travis, which is the ex, kind of had an encounter with Ryan and Jasmine by the pool. And all of a sudden, uh, I guess Ryan um, hits Jasmine in the arm hard enough to where she falls into the pool and she's fully clothed and there he's just like, that was a little aggressive. Like, you just knocked her into the pool. Mm-hmm. Um, and all the while, this is the, a very toxic relationship. Like, they've, they, they cheat on each other. They know about it. They get together. They break up. They're actually mm-hmm. married, so they mm-hmm. don't really break up, but they're just... It's just one of those very toxic relationships. So later, Jasmine ends up filing domestic violence against Ryan. And then they take another little break. Ryan's eventually arrested for a misdemeanor for domestic violence. And he has a court date set for December 2009. And then Jasmine's mother comes in and she says that the marriage had been annulled in May 2009. Okay. So, I guess, yeah, if you can do it, you can annul it within a year. So, they had this marriage that's, now it's annulled, and then Ryan's, like, doesn't have any money now. Mm. So, he's like, well, he's trying to get her back, and he's sending her texts, and he's writing her letters, and he's doing all these things, trying to get her back, trying to get her back. But he decides, okay, I'm going to go on this show. I love, what is it? I love love? (laughs) (laughs) Megan wants a millionaire. The other one. I love money. Okay. I Love Money 3? Yeah. That one. So he goes on to that show in order, because he wants to win. Yeah, there's three. There was one. Oh, yeah, I Love Money. I Love Money 3, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he goes on. He ends up winning $250,000. So he's like, yes, I can get her back now, and I can show her that I have money again, and here we go, blah, blah, blah. So he does, and they do. Now they're back together. What a shock. Um, he, se- he sent her an email. By the way, you can't go see any of those episodes anymore because oh, they took them down. They have been all removed. Because <gasps> I was like, I want to go back and watch them all. Because I, I remember know. some of the, the winners from the fr- – because I think they would switch, like, who – like, maybe season one – a woman one, maybe? I've never heard of Hoops. any of those shows. Do you know who Hoops is? Who dates no. Shaq? Or so? Okay, I don't know. Okay. Well, Ryan ends up writing a letter or like a note to her. Jasmine is like, if you can come back to me and stop all the craziness, we can have a wonderful life. I will never leave you. I only want you. Mm, how romantic. Yeah, that is, listen. That is the type of love I want. Me is write me that letter and I'm in. He called her repeatedly from Mexico, and while he was filming the show, that's when he ends up winning. And then this, um, the co-founder of, okay, so Mark Cronin, he's the co-founder of 51 Minds Entertainment. He's the one that produces these shows. Okay. The production company behind Megan Wants a Millionaire and I Love Money and some other VH1 shows. He says... He kept telling her on the phone, I'm going to win this, and you and I are going to have a life that I've always promised, and that, like, and then he would be like, 
well, wait, where were you last night? Because he's in Mexico. Sh-. And then he would just start, like, accusing. And so he goes from, like, one extreme to the next. And he was just, he's off. Yeah. Obviously, he's yeah. up and down, up and down. But, like I said, they get back together. And this is whenever they go to a poker tournament in, it's in San Diego. Okay. Okay. So they go and they stay um, on August 13th. They check into the La Verge de la Mar Hotel. La yeah, Verge I've been there. de la Mar on the verge of the la Mar <laughs> in San Diego. This is just two weeks uh, after the premiere of Megan Wants a Millionaire and shortly after the filming of I Love Money 3 had ended. Yes, because it was back to back. Because they were, yep. They were advertising Megan Wants a Millionaire on I Love Money 3. So it was like right when they aired the winner, right, then you knew you were going to watch the premiere of Megan Wants a Millionaire. And they were all, all these shows had the same faces. So if you're invested in one, you're invested in all of them because they kind of recycled some of the same yeah. people. So I guess this guy was a pretty, no, like, he was known to be on these shows. Yeah, because he was at least on yeah. a couple of them. And then Megan was on a couple of them. So you were kind of invested in yeah. all of them. So when this hit, if you watched any of these shows, it was kind of a big deal back then. Well, unfortunately, on August 15, which is two weeks after all the premiere yes. and the filming ended, Jasmine's body was discovered naked, crammed inside of a suitcase, and shoved into a dumpster at Buena Park, California. Damn these suitcases. How many people put people in suitcases? I just found out about another one. Megan McGuire? Have you heard the Ma- Melanie? Melanie McGuire one? I think they used to train her. No. <laughs> she killed her husband put it in a suitcase look it up megan Mag- somebody mcguire so we have sarah boone who she put her boyfriend in the suitcase so they're playing sex hide and go seek they're do. oh no they didn't do her we had gannon we have gannon stouch who's letitia stouch who we just talked about earlier she's the one who cut up her dismembered her stepson and put her, him in a suitcase and threw him in the water this guy melanie mcguire Melanie McGuire. So they find Fraggle Jasmine's Rock. body. This guy, this random dude walking through the dumpster. Some say he's like looking for recyclables. I don't know. Somebody's like he was walking his dog and whatever. He finds a suitcase. It's leaking stuff, obviously. And they open the suitcase and there is a naked female. But all of her teeth have been pulled out with pliers. Mm, why do they do that? tips have been chopped off they try to be so smart and it just still didn't I mean, work they, that way you can't identify them um, but they still have no idea who she is but good thing she implants! Has implants! <laughs> okay and, and that was gonna happen in florida and california <laughs> so y'all Go ahead and get you some <laughs> breast implants because that's the way they're gonna identify you is by the serial number on your implant. They gonna be when they do mine. Oh, those was a long time ago. We lost the serial number. The autopsist is like, oh, I see scar tissue under the breast. Let me pull out that implant. Let me check out that serial number. And bam, Ryan has no idea. Obviously, at the time that that suitcase has been found, and. He, on the same day she's found, he goes and reports her missing. Okay, okay. To the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. How long has she been gone? Did we, do we know? Uh, this was on... When did he kill her? August 5th. Hang on. Where's my timeline? August 13th? Is when he reported her missing? On August 13th they, is when they checked into the hotel, and yeah, it was like on the 14th is... is Oh, so he did it the next day. He didn't wait. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they found they found the body on the 15th, so it was just in that key reporter missing. Okay. The same day they had the news conference. So they go, he goes, he reports her missing, same day the body was found, in the report, he called and said Jasmine disappeared on August... You always ask the question before I even say it. On August 14th, <laughs> while running errands, is what he said, he was asked to describe Jasmine. Okay. And he said she had perfect teeth. 
and that she had just went to get her nails done. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, in Jasmine, in reality, Jasmine. And she did not have implants, so don't worry about checking those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's already dead, and he had been sending text messages from her phone to his phone. Like, so he's sending them to himself. But after filing this missing persons report, Ryan is nowhere to be found. Hmm, where's he at on this on the set of Megan Wants Millionaire? <laughs> So, a friend starts to speculate that text messages between Jasmine and Robert, which is her ex fiance, that's the one she was talking yeah. to a lot at the pool, that apparently there, that, what's his name? Ryan? Yeah. Ryan found text messages between Jasmine and her ex, and that, like, he flew into this jealous rage, which, you know, they, that's like their typical routine, right? But police found, okay, this is good. It's crazy. Police find blood on the patio of the hotel room in San Diego where they were staying during this poker tournament. And But Ryan had checked out of the hotel alone, and he had an emptied suitcase, and that's when he put Jasmine's body in it. So they don't know if they got, they're thinking they got into an argument in the car. They go into the hotel. They have surveillance footage. So they see both of them walking in and then they see him like jogging out with the suitcase, not with the suitcase because they see him going back and forth multiple uh, times, but they don't ever see her come back out. So okay. then they're like, well, maybe she had gone, was trying to get out of the sliding glass door that went to the parking lot or whatever. And. They're thinking that they had an argument in the car. They come in the hotel. She was trying to get out. He, like, stops her. I don't know. He runs back in. He comes back out with this with the actual room phone, like the hotel oh. phone, because she's not dead. She's just been beaten enough to where she could possibly get to the phone to call somebody, and he <laughs> takes it out of the room. Wow. Yes. And then he goes and gets ice, and it's like, is he trying to like make th- maybe he's like <laughs> make a preserve of his her body? Then some were saying, well, maybe he felt bad because he beat her up so bad, and he was like, oh gosh, this is uh, this has gone too far, and h- let me take care of her now. But then I guess that's when he decided to put her in the suitcase. <laughs> wow. So all that to say, he Ryan had gone and he had checked out of the hotel alone, and. That's whenever they find they end up finding out about the suitcase, and because they look at they start looking at the, all the surveillance and they're like, well, yeah, he obviously checked out alone. Where is she? We find the suitcase. This obviously these people are connected. Then they end up finding the serial numbers on the implants and all that stuff. So they have this twenty five thousand dollar reward for Ryan Jenkins because he's he's gone. He went and filed this missing persons report, and now he's on he's nowhere to be found. So the uh, police said that Ryan left the crime scene in San Diego and he headed to Canada, but he's from Canada. Okay. So once he was over the border, he stopped at the Thunderbird Motel on August 20th. Sounds sketch. A few days later, he paid for three nights and he failed $75 on the third night. So the manager goes and decides to check on him or check on this person. Ryan was found deceased, hanging from a clothes rack by a belt. I don't think I knew he was dead. I know. Uh. This is, and then this is when they go and they find all this other evidence. They find... (laughs) Videos from the, they find all the surveillance. They go to their penthouse. They find all these letters he's written. They find cell phone records, interviews, and all this evidence that help them piece it all together. And yeah. It all together. And the police officer is like, it all boils down to domestic violence situation that went, that got way out of hand. It's like, 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, you think. And it was a result of jealousy. Well, and, okay. And her car was missing. Uh-huh. So they find that Jasmine's white 2007 Mercedes-Benz in was, like, left in a West Hollywood parking lot. And inside the car, they that's where they found signs of a violent struggle, like blood swirls on the passenger seat, on the back seat, on the window. So that's why they're thinking that maybe he beat her up so bad there and then ended up finishing her off in wow. the hotel room. They said in the car there was, under the undercarriage, there was like twigs and weeds, meaning that it had been driven off, off road. the road. Um, and then they found a note. There was a note in his glove compartment and there was a note on his laptop. Either way, they found this note and it basically was expressing his love and frustration for Jasmine. And they say that he wrote it while he was in that, while he was in the hotel room in Canada is when he wrote this note. And he basically was talking about how he was resentful because she was cheating on him, but he also refers to the ex-boyfriend um, but he doesn't really say like why he did this or no apology to the, to her or anything. He apologized to his family for causing trouble, but doesn't men- mention Jasmine's death or talk about his escape or anything he planned to do. Blah, 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 blah. Nothing. Yada, yada, yada. Um, they ended up finding more letters unopened that were in their penthouse and this just talked about how he wanted to follow her and wanted just wanted to be together and it, but it also talked about how jealous and possessive he was but it didn't have any any threats so um i okay so there was only three episodes of megan wants a millionaire yeah, it says that there, because then VH1 was come under fire for hiring this guy who had a domestic, who had like a criminal background. Uh huh. And they had, this was, they're like, you didn't outsource correctly or whatever. Um, he was a contestant. Yes. He was supposed, so one of the, you know, there's all these theories. One of the theories that I remember hearing at the time is that. Jasmine had the money, right? He didn't have the money. Jasmine had the money. And you had to at least be worth a million to be on, to be a contestant on Megan Wants a Millionaire. Uh So he wanted to kill Jasmine um, to have the money to be a contestant on The Millionaire to get Megan. So he had to get rid of Jasmine to have, like, the money. So he was... Grooming Jasmine, I guess, maybe, but actually on the show to try to be with and groom and be with Megan. And so then Jasmine turns up dead Dead. and they stop the show. Yeah, they stop the show. Yeah, because um, he ends up doing it. Yeah. (laughs) Because he killed her. Because he killed her. VH1 announced... Yeah, they announced they would not run the third season of I Love Money. Obviously, because he won it, and now he's dead, and he's a murderer. They deleted the show from VH1's page. Yeah. And they dropped all the reruns, and all past shows were removed, just like you said earlier. But And anything that was scheduled, like archived, scheduled to play, gone. Everything. But I feel like I Megan wants a millionaire. Did you like I I feel like I remember I saw like I had my DVR set. Well, that to see one did, but the three I episodes Love Money is the one that was okay. And I think they stopped airing Megan wants a millionaire once all that happened. I think yeah, like it just stopped mid tracks. Like yeah, I will. There's three episodes was just on my DVR for the longest because it just stopped and then all yeah. that came up. Yep. On the mm. on the premiere episode of it, the Mega Wants Millionaire, Ryan referred to himself as a little bit of a prince charming and a little bit of a bad boy. Wow, wow, wow. Love it. Yeah. Love it. There's more drama to it. Like he ended up even making it to the finals with her, but then like it was agreed upon by like the production that he would not win. Oh. Yeah, it's real weird. So I guess I don't understand. 
Because this is well, recorded. He didn't, win. he didn't win. And then two days later, he calls up this Megan person. He calls Megan up because they were like, so he didn't win. Uh huh. But they wanted to actually be together. But she was told to pick the other guy. Okay. So she picks the other guy. They're still chatting and they're like, oh, we're actually going to get together. But then he goes to Vegas and two days later he texts Megan. He's like, oh, I have something to tell you. I went to Vegas and I met a girl and she's my soulmate and we got married. Oh. Dang it. I just can't remember how. Okay, so it was all already said and done. So yeah. season three of All Love Money was already all said and done. Megan Wants a Millionaire was already, which I guess that's how it always is, yeah, already all done, said and done. I just don't understand why they decided to not air I Love Money, but then they decided to air Megan Wants a Millionaire and then just stopped because it's for this, the same character. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot. Yep. So don't get married in Vegas. That's what it always sounds like. <laughs> it's your life lesson. Don't get married in Vegas and get breast implants. Get breast implants right now. Make sure they put the serial number really, really, really dark on your implants. But okay. you know what? Uh, you know what? One thing. Um, uh, one other thing people need to get. What? Um, they need to get a Wongo puzzle. What is that? Well, I'm here to tell you. I'm your puzzle loving pal, and I'm gonna tell you about my latest obsession, Wongo puzzles. These things are the real deal, folks. They're high quality, handcrafted, and perfect for anyone who loves a good challenge but doesn't want to dedicate their entire kitchen table to puzzles for a week. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> I might still be there. But I got one of these actually for Christmas. It was the smaller version. I'm not sure if they're all small, but they are. I loved it. I did it, and I was so proud of myself. And they have all these cool designs, and you need to go to um, wongopuzzles.com. And use our discount, BHH, you get 10% off. And I really want to know if you'll order one of these puzzles, how would you think about it? Because it's so fun and I need to order like five. Five? Yeah. Five. 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 All right, Cure Hydration. If you are obsessed with your hydration like I am, this may be something good for you. This is something that is so easy Forget about the Gatorade. That just dehydrates you even more. And if you don't like the taste of coconut water, try Cure Hydration. You can go to my offer link. It is zen, Z-E-N, dot A-I slash B-H-H 20. This is vegan. This is no added sugars. It's just a little packet you could put in your water. Or if you're really smart during happy hour, you could put it into your Tito's. It is just as effective as an IV drip, and it's if you don't not like the taste of water, it's not as boring as water, not as sugary as the sports drink, and if you're an athlete, it'll give you the best performance, or if you just get brain frog or headaches because you do not stay hydrated. Brain frog? Brain fog. <laughs> I get the brain solution frog. is... Cure hydration. So go to that link, enter the code, and you can get a. That's all we have, y'all. We will see you next week for episode 100. Oh my God. If we don't see you next week, we'll see you the week after because <laughs> it's going to be a big episode. Don't be mad at us. Just, just, just playing. We'll see you at some point, episode 100. Also, um, we are going to be announcing we have official date for the live show and if you do not live in Waco plan a trip in June to come to Waco come to Waco come to Waco in June June 24th if you want to see us live in person I'll just we be getting have back from the pre-trial hearing, <laughs> preliminary hearing we have a big announcement but i'm not going to tell you today i'm going to tell you on the 100th episode so don't forget to stay aware stay alive and always be dtf bye y'all bye
This has been a Rogue Media Network production. Thank you.